Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney and welcome to From the Rabbi's Bookshelves. Our text today is the most extraordinary work of Jewish legal writing in the 19th century. It is the Aruch HaShulchan. It's by Rabbi Yechiel Michael Alevi Epstein. Rabbi Epstein was born into a distinguished rabbinic family in 1829 and lived a long life, had a long career until he died in 1908. He was a rabbi of a community in Nevada, in Lithuania for 34 years and he writes a comprehensive restatement of all practical Jewish law. In the 16th century, Rabbi Yosef Karo had written the Shulchan Aruch, which means the lay table, in which he gave the rulings for all the laws practical uh, in his own day. And then subsequent to that, there were many commentaries and discussions and arguments one way or another about the way the law should be decided. And the Shulchan Aruch became surrounded by many commentaries and super commentaries. And also there were other works, the response literature, which explored other detailed questions. And so it became very confusing and difficult to work out the law in a particular case. Now there were different ways to solve that problem of how to find one's way through to the bottom line of any particular halachic ruling. The Mishnah Brewer, which we looked at a few weeks ago, decided to tackle the problem by writing a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, which tried to summarize all of the subsequent discussions. That was only one part of the Shulchan Aruch, or Achaim, which deals mostly with everyday ritual laws, and uh, was sufficient for most people most of the time. But for scholars and rabbis who are engaged in the whole area of Jewish law, they needed something more. And this was supplied by Rabbi Epstein. The Aruch HaShulchan, which is a flip, of course, of the name Shulchan Aruch, is uh, a treatment of the entire scope of the original Shulchan Aruch. But he doesn't write a commentary, and he doesn't just uh, give subsequent opinions to the Shulchan Aruch, he takes the Halakhic issue, whatever it is, back to its earlier sources. He quotes the uh, Talmud, he quotes the pre Shulchan Aruch authorities from the pre uh, 16th century, he quotes the Shulchan Aruch itself and the Ramah, the Ashkenazi gloss on the Shulchan Aruch, and he quotes all subsequent authorities that he regards to be sufficiently important to be worth quoting, and then he gives his own ruling. And uh, he's not afraid to disagree with those who come before him after the time of the Shulchan Aruch. One of the interesting aspects of this work is its leniency. It's generally seen as a more lenient work than the Mishnah Brewer, although obviously that has to be re examined in some detail. Uh, and that may be because he wasn't a yeshiva head primarily. He wasn't a, uh, a cloistered scholar away from real life. He was the rabbi of the community for 34 years and lived with their realities. He's also very much in touch with local custom. He tries to uphold local custom uh, even when it goes against maybe an, a, an abstract view of what the law should be. And you can see both of these uh, aspects in this comment in the laws of Erevin, the laws of that uh, Sabbath boundary which allows you to carry in certain areas. Now, an Erev only works in an area which the Torah itself says you can carry anyway. The Torah says you can't carry in a Rosh Rabim, a public area, but you can carry in a Rosh Yachid, a private area. But what is the definition of Rosh Hashanah Rabim and Rosh Yachid that makes a difference whether you can construct an Erev in a Rosh Hashanah Yachid? So the Arach HaShulchan gives an abstract legal discussion and he comes to quite a stringent conclusion, but then he makes this rather um, fascinating comment. He says, Avo, al kol panim, ma moel ha'richus achresha erevin nizpatshu berov ari Yisrael harbe meos shanim makodem, Rak al semech ha hesa ze, uchilu bas kol yatza halacha kashita zo. He said, What use is this long discussion I've gone into, which may arrive at a theoretical conclusion that we should be strict in how we define different areas that can either allow or not allow an Eruv to be constructed? The point is that for many centuries, in practice, all the Erevin of Jewish communities have been established using a lenient opinion. And therefore, it is as though a divine voice cried out, we should follow this lenient opinion. So he does regard the course of Jewish history and Jewish halachic history as having a very important say. The consensus which has emerged in terms of custom and practice is as important or more important than any abstract um, halachic uh, discussion which he may engage in. And therefore, he rules ultimately on the lenient side and he rules in accordance with popular practice, not how he might rule in some sort of vacuum. And not only his brilliance, but also his practicality endeared him to uh, students and scholars for many years since, and it's still an essential work of halakha.
Thanks for joining.